Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos from the Water for Transport chapter. What I'll do in a second is I'll read the actual question. There's an A and a B part for this question. Once you've read the question, you have about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, just press play and I'll go over the question bit by bit. So I'll read the actual question. It says, name two products extracted from donated blood and state their uses. That's for four marks. And B, propose one reason why scientists have begun to develop artificial blood. That's worth also one mark. Now, when it comes to these two and the one, they've written in big, in capital letters. That wasn't me, that's from the exam question themselves. They've done that, just to be able to make sure that you don't write more than you have to. So this is two for name two and propose one reason. So you have about five seconds to pause the video and, attempt, and then attempt the question once you've paused the video. And when you're ready, just press play. Welcome back. All right, so for this question, there is an A and a B part. Now, for the A part, you can look at the marks. It's four marks, so it's worth a lot of marks. Um, for a relatively simple question, it says name two products. So here we have our memory that comes into play. We just have to have in our memory two of these products extracted from blood. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the red blood cells. So let's write RB for red blood cells, plus the white blood cells. These were two products extracted from the near blood. You could have also chosen platelets, um, immunofactors, plasma, to the different parts, but the ones I've chosen, because it only says name two, are the red blood cells and the white blood cells. And also you have to state their use. So after you've named them, you have to state their use. So what are they used for? Especially when it comes to, not just what are they generally used for, but what are they used for when it comes to blood donations? What are they used for? Four. So name it and then say their use for each of them. So that's what I've done here. So two products extracted from the blood are red blood cells and white blood cells. Those would probably be the easiest two marks. Again, you get one sentence, you get two marks for that. Just for naming red blood, and, red blood cells and white blood cells. There's two marks ready. And then you have to state their use. Um, red blood cells are used to increase the oxygen carrying capacity and thereby also helps individuals suffering from anemia. So by increasing, because obviously the hemoglobin is in red blood cells, it increases the oxygen carrying capacity, which means we can carry more oxygen. And because of this, it helps individuals suffering from anemia. You don't have to explain what anemia is in that video, uh, in, this, in this exam question, but anemia, which I've probably even spelled wrong, but anemia is just if someone has low um, red blood cells in there. So if you have low red blood cells, which females often do, 10% of females are have low um, red blood cells, so are anemic. So if they have that, then we can inject red blood cells from other people into them, and then that will increase their oxygen carrying capacity. That would be worth one mark, and then we state the use for the other one. White blood cells are used to help fight infection, and are commonly injected into chemotherapy patients to boost their immune system. This was the use, overall use, was just to help and fight infection. That's what we use white blood cells in our body for. But when it comes to what we use it in terms of medicine, we use white blood cells because we can inject those into people who do undergo chemotherapy. Remember, that was for people with cancer, chemotherapy. And those patients benefit because it, it boosts their immune system. That's also one mark. So for this kind of answer, we get four marks out of four. So again, that's a very, and don't, you don't have to write much for four marks. That's a very good kind of, very good question. And then the other part, B, propose one reason why scientists have begun to develop artificial blood. Now here we have to propose one reason. And there were different reasons. So we, for example, blood supply is short. That's the one I'll be talking about. Blood supply, increased blood supply, uh, compatibility issues. So for example, some people can't accept anything but O minus. So if we can make blood, we can make that O minus blood which everyone can take, or, or positive blood actually. Compatibility issues can be removed. Uh, and then we also have stuff like for the develop, developing countries and no risk of, no risk of contamination. Co contamination, so the blood is clean, 
which is might not always be the case when it comes to developing countries. So these are three reasons, but we just need to propose one reason. And when it says propose, again, you don't have to write too much. So all I've written in this case was to increase the blood supply, we, as we currently have a major shortage of blood supply. So one reason would be yeah, it's just to increase the blood supply, because at the moment we don't have much. And that's with one mark, and you get one mark for that kind of question, for that kind of answer. So four marks for the top, and then one mark for the bottom, five out of five in total. For a relatively a simple, straightforward question. And where this comes from, this comes from this question, this dot point. Students will use a available evidence to propose, propose reasons why such research is needed. So why do we need artificial blood comes from this dot point, a second investigation. And I'm not actually sure, but that was supposed to pop out another thing here, another one. Uh, this, these here come from the dot point that talks about donated blood. So there was a donated blood dot point, which was also second-hand investigation, where all this comes from. Right? So these were actually second-hand investigations. So it just shows you, you need to also know your second-hand investigations, because they can actually test you on that, on that as well. Right? So both of the questions come from second-hand investigations. And to be able to answer them properly, you need to know them as well. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.